Leave us granted. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Madam Speaker, can I uh, commend the member for Scullin, one of a one of our greatest parliamentarians, indeed a hereditary parliamentarian of great distinction, uh, on his uh, remarks and indeed on this report. And honourable, no, he didn't throw me out. Uh, <laughs> tell the member for Patterson that um, he's very discerning as to who he threw out. Uh, the, uh, I think he threw you out uh, many times. Many times. Yes, and that, now, Madam Speaker, this report deals with, as the member for Scarlin said in his remarks, the media legislation that is currently before the parliament. And this report offers very, very harsh criticisms, but measured criticisms, responsible criticisms. It makes the point that these laws are an affront to human rights, and it holds the government up for its reckless haste, its obscene haste, in bringing these laws in. It notes in the report that the uh, new media laws, which would have the effect of licensing journalism in the sense that no journalist uh, would have the benefit of the exemptions under the Privacy Act, without which they cannot do their work, uh, that's common ground, uh, would not have the benefit of the exemptions under the Privacy Act unless they are a member of a press council type body or their, their employer is a member of a press council type body, which is in effect licensed by this new uh, entity, the Public Interest Media Advocate, that's been the subject of so many discussions with the independents overnight and this morning. Um, the, the, as the report says, the effect of the bills are, as a practical matter, I'm quoting from paragraph 1.78, to require a news media source to become a member of a self-regulation body whose constitution, powers and operations satisfy a number of criteria. The PEMA is the arbiter of whether the self-regulation organisation uh, organisation satisfies those standards. It then goes on to note that in 1.80 that removing the exemption of news media organisations from the Privacy Act appears to effectively limit the right to freedom of speech of the journalists who may no longer have the benefit of the exemption and limits the rights of readers and viewers to receive information unfettered by these confidentiality requirements. It adds that this limits the rights of these organisations to freedom of speech and the rights of people to receive information from such news organisations. In order to justify an important change of this sort, the committee writes, the minister must be able to point to a legitimate objective for such regulation, show that the proposed scheme bears a rational connection to this objection and demonstrate that it is a necessary and proportionate measure for achieving that objective. Well, needless to say, the minister has not done that. The government has done, not done that. There is no regulatory impact statement. We've begged the prime minister to tell us what is the problem? What is the issue? What are the mischiefs that the legislation is designed to address? And she, she will, cannot or will not nominate them. The committee concludes in paragraphs 1.89 and 1.90 in the boldest or the blackest of bold type they could find in their uh, collection of fonts, Madam Speaker. This is their conclusion. They say the committee considers that the material presented to the parliament in support of the bill does not provide sufficient information about supposed inadequacies or ineffectiveness of the current systems for the regulation of the media to allow an informed assessment of the need for and proportionality of the proposed scheme of regulation. The committee intends to write to the Minister for Broadband Communications and the Digital Economy that's Senator Conroy, to request further information as to why changes to the regulation of the news media is considered necessary and will ask whether other less intrusive alternatives to the proposed scheme were considered and, if so, why this scheme was chosen over any less intrusive measures. Now, this was not written by the Liberal Party. This was not written by the opposition or by me or by the member for Warringah, the leader of the opposition. This was written by a committee of this parliament in which the government has a majority, chaired by the former speaker, one of the most distinguished and revered parliamentarians in this building, and he is holding up this government, the government of his own party, to account 
for their reckless disregard of due process and of human rights. This is saying shame, Julia Gillard, shame, Stephen Conroy. You know what you're doing is wrong. This, these bills are wrong. You have to do better. And I commend this report and its conclusions to all honourable members.